Hello and back to YCFT. This week we are looking at a Wes Craven directed comic book movie. Mm -hmm. A few words you didn't think you'd put together, put <laughs> yeah. together in one sentence. But it's from 1982 and is his version of Swamp Thing. This is, would be his fourth feature film. Mm -hmm. It's weird he went from like, like uh, Last House on the Left to a couple of films later. Yes, Swamp Thing. to Swamp Thing. <laughs> yeah, two yeah. very, very different movies there. This was a, an, inter an interesting watch. And I think the reason I want to talk about it is, well, with the recent shift up with Warner Brothers and DC, one thing that has been announced, James Mangle will be directing a new Swamp Thing movie. Interesting. But it's had many incarnations. I was a massive fan of the 2019 series that was very short-lived. Short-lived. It was a masterpiece. Derek <laughs> Mears was amazing as Swamp Thing. <laughs> so, of course, it got axed. Of, yeah, of course, it, of course it got axed. But it was the perfect Swamp Thing series we had the guy is shark from Sharknado as the Blue Demon. I think that's the name of the bad guy. My, my Swamp Thing law is not up, I'm to, not, up to not, scratch. I'm not up to scratch. All I know is from what I've seen. And that series was my first yeah. venture into it. Yeah. And I was devastated when it got cancelled. I enjoyed it too. I think you asked me to watch one or two episodes of that and yeah. I, I was enjoying it. So we're going all the way back to the original film. Yes. And... God, this film is dated. <laughs> oh, okay. This film there's, is dated. There's right. things to say. It stars Adrian Barbo. Screen queen. As a screen, yes, she is a screen queen. Legend. And Ray Wise. And it's about these two scientists. I wasn't name of Adrian Barbo's character, because I just know it was Adrian for uh, the entire film. She's called Alice Cable. Now, from what I believe, she is an amalgamation of two of the comic book characters. Yeah, is that Matt right? Cable. Yes. Yeah, and, so, and someone else. And Ray Wise plays Alec Holland. Yes, Dr. Science. Dr. Yeah. Alec Honor. So she has come to the swamp where it's set in Louisiana, but I think where it was filmed in... It was filmed in South Carolina, but yeah, it's set in like the, the bayous of Louisiana. Yeah. To be fair, that's one thing that I actually really sort of the setting of this film oh, is, yeah. like, is incredible. I know they originally wanted to use Universal's lot to make, uh, to use the Creature from the Black Lagoon too swamp small. set, but it was too small for what they wanted to do. Too but, small. Uh, Fire film and on location was incredibly difficult. I like you can tell it's hot. It looks humid. They look hot and bothered. I can't even imagine what it must have been like in costumes. Well, I know that the as well. bad mods. Spo no, spoilers. 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 Yeah. spoilers. One, the one of the guys who was in the bad guy costume did pass out one day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was just incredible. So yeah. So she is joining this research team in the middle of the swamp. Yes. Searching for a way to merge plants with animals for science reasons. For science reasons. And there is a group of mercenaries out there who yes. want the research for themselves to make yes. bioweapons. And things kind of go awry, an accident happens, and Alec yes. is turned into Swamp Thing. Into Swamp Thing. That bare bones, that is basically the plot. Isn't yeah, it? literally, yeah. So like the... Um the, the mercenary operation is led by a guy called Arcane. And Arcane. he, which is a really great baddie name. Yeah. Um, and he hijacks the operation. Yeah, things go awry. And Ray Wise accidentally lets the substance loose on himself, which leads to him turning into Swamp Thing. Right, show your notebook when you pick... You've had a weird crush on old Ray Wise for a while. I really have. Like, I was just kind of, like, bowled over by... The young 35-year-old yeah, Ray say, Wise. Young, 30, he's 35 still. 35 is young. 35 is very young. I I was honestly just... He reminded me of you when he's clean-shaven, to be I fair. I do not look like Ray Wise. But Ray Wise is a sexy son of a bitch in this, and I'm really sorry that we only get minimal screen time with him. The Swamp Thing himself is played by a stuntman called Dick Durek. Durek, yeah. Dick Durek. But originally... Ray Wise, like Wes Craven wanted Ray Wise to be in the costume. Yes, he did. And they filmed. They filmed a lot of scenes with yeah. him in it, but then they realised the transition from Ray Wise Swamp Thing to Stuntman Swamp Thing for certain scenes. It yes. was too, it was far too drastic. Physically, they were just too different, like different yeah. body builds and it just wasn't going to work so, with uh, continuity. It's hard to tell well, but I think they were well into the film where they just decided to refilm a lot of the scenes yeah. with... Dick. I think that's one of the problems you had with the film is that there's such a difference between Ray Wise and Dick. I, they just they feel like completely different characters. That it, it was a big it was a big issue for me because it was cool seeing the behind scenes photos of like 
Oh, it was. In the costume as well. It was, yeah. There's, there's a so few I think they mostly just end up using them for reference. I think so, yeah. I mean, I we don't really... Minimal scenes of Ray Wise at the beginning, but we get a nice glimpse into his character. He's very suave, you know, he's very sophisticated. He's clearly got a bit Eats of a crush. Eats up that scenery. Absolutely. And, you know, he's got a little thing going on with Adrian Barbeau or he wants something to happen with Adrian. Um, so he's very charming. And I think when he disappears and then in come Dick Durick, the stuntman... Not to say that Dick Doric gives a bad performance. I think he does a really nice job. I like how he emotes through the costume and the makeup and whatnot. But there is nothing of Ray Wise in that performance. And mm. obviously there can't be. It's, it's a completely different person. But like I I feel Ray's well, there a absence. Bit of I get the a reason disconnect. why yeah. they had to do it. Saying that, though, Dick Doric, he ended up having a bit of a career play in Swamp Thing. Yeah, he, he did. He returned yeah, yeah, for yeah. the sequel a few years later. And yeah. he starred in... I didn't realize there was a 90s TV show, but it ran for 72 episodes over three yeah. seasons. And he, Ray Wise does appear in one episode of that. Adrian Barbeau actually appears in... The 2019. The 2019 one. series. Yeah. Well, I assume Dick would have as well, but he tragically passed away of cancer in 2009. Yeah. But he had a nice career playing yeah. Swamp Thing. So it, I think it kind of worked out for the best because he is now like synonymous with that role. That's very A role cool. that he was only supposed to do stunts for. A happy accident. Yeah. yeah. But it is a little bit of a disconnect. The... What do you think of the suit? Okay, so at first, I didn't mind the suit. When we started watching it, I was like, okay, minimal, minimal budget. You know, it's one of those 80s horror movies. I'm not asking for a lot. And then the more I kind of watched it, the more I paid attention to it. Doesn't it doesn't work well I when it gets wet, I didn't quite like it. I'm going to say, when they do close-ups on him, any close-up of him looks really good. Yeah. He's always literally, it's the wides. It's the wides. And especially like the bad guy suit. It does... See, it's a really weird I don't know if he's meant to be from the comics that I was just going to ask I don't know what comic book Swamp Thing looks like I imagine obviously green and like to be fair he looks like the 2019 one the 2019 one I think is the closest to get to him but like Dick Durick is a very kind of you know tall lean guy and I don't know why they went with the idea like his face very kind of like slim pointy nose and there was something of Tin Man from Wizard of Oz yeah. that just but can we appreciate how bad the bad guy's costume looks Oh, yes. That is pretty bad. Not But there's great. some scenes, like, the cinematography for the most part is really good across this. It's when he comes out, like, the burnt down lab and you got the smoke behind him with the beams. It looks really good. Oh. So certain shots <clears throat> that are obviously framed up to be beauty shots, they yeah. make it work really well. It's the action shots where the suit kind of... Yeah, it's not... Struggles, and especially when he's had his arm chopped off. It's like... I didn't care for it. Yeah. <laughs> but I said, the close-ups I really liked. I think he said it took four hours to get in that suit. yeah. By the second one, they had it down to about two hours. Yeah. And by the TV series, he said it was he thinks the best suit they had, and it only took like between 15 and 30 minutes to get into it. Yeah. I mean, look. From what I see, I think the suit does look good in the second one. Yeah. It's more, he looks more living, like there's more plants and that going off. Obviously, we're working within a budget. Working within a budget, and obviously the climate as well. It's like, you know, kudos to anyone that can don that costume and that makeup for long lengths of time in that in those temperatures so yeah, yeah. if i needed freaking breaks like i said the bad guy played the bad guy when he's all turned into a monster did just pass out at one point he did yeah and it's an interesting thing about the formula because again i, like, I don't have comic book knowledge so i'm sorry if i'm stating the obvious here but when ray wise turns he realizes that because other people test out the formula and they don't look the same as Ray Wise. They turn into their own version of a creature or a monster. And so they ha they hypothesise that the formula exhibits your inner qualities. So it's like, well, Ray Wise was really interested in plants. <laughs> you know, that was like his life's work. So hence why he basically is one gigantic vine. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the other characters, Bruno, like one of the mercenary henchmen, he takes it and he shrinks into almost like this monkey-like kind of figure. Yeah. And I think they, they say, oh, well, Bruno was a stupid guy. So I don't know. And the bad guy turns into a weird combination of Swamp Thing and is it a hog? It's like a hog. hog? It's also like weird. Yeah, I think a ho like a big hairy hog. It's weird. With like a protruding jaw and everything. And obviously Arcane is, you know, like the big bad guy. So obviously, you know, his outsides is going to be just as corrupt and ugly as his insides. Yeah. There is a lot of sexism in this film. Oh. Okay. It's rampant. It like, actually Like only is. done by the bad guys. Also, I think we were watching a, a Joe Blow video on it and they said, oh, if you want to know who the bad guys are, just look at the costumes. It's just, really obvious. Yeah, just jet black. Uh, but yeah. But yeah, the bad guys are 
very sexist towards I don't Adrian think, Barbo. I don't think the character Alice had been on screen for more than five minutes before she arrives at the laboratory. She's met by fellow scientists. She's called Abroad. It's made explicitly clear to her, she's told repeatedly, that the swamp is no place for someone like her. Swamp is no place for a woman. Like an ant's colony is no place for a woman. <laughs> yeah. We, our video on them should be out by now, so people <laughs> yeah. get that reference. Um, yeah, there is a lot, there's a lot of sexism. Saying that, she kicks ass in she this film. She really is actually does. fantastic. I, I adore, It might actually be one of my favourite performances of her. I adore Adrian Barbo. Everything I've seen her in, I love. But she gives it as good back. Like, she is a fighter. Yeah, she even did it as a, at a topless scene, which... The folks in America didn't get in their cut of the film. No. But apparently we did. Uh, I think it's the scene where she's bathing in the swamp a little bit later and she emerges from it. And she, yeah, she's topless. But she um, she fights. She is good with a gun. She's good with her hands. Like, she will fight, yeah. physically fight. You know, she's not she's not afraid of these mercenaries. Like, she is... She's a joy to watch. And it's just... Again, like, we mentioned in another video about, you know, endearing final girls. And, like, sometimes they just have this quality about them that's just very kind of likable and I, Adrian Barbeau just has that very natural ability I like yeah. I find it just interesting to watch but I also I'm rooting for her she all, all the way ultimately is more interesting than Swamp Thing she is I think as much as the real setting really helped there was no like unique set pieces within the swamp so like when he hides her out the way when she's unconscious he just kind of puts a few branches over yeah her. there's no like again like obviously working within a budget that... yeah but just everywhere just kind of looks very much the same. Yes. Yeah, 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 for sure. And the, the weird thing is with Adrian's character, I don't know if Wes Craven was deliberately doing this, but there does come a point where the film almost feels like it's a throwback to a 1950s monster movie. Yeah. Because Adrian Barbeau, like our final girl, and she very clearly kind of turns into a damsel in distress. I mean, when she's captured by Arcane, she's tied. They change her clothes from like this, you know, kind of, Hawaiian shirt that she's got in her cargo pants and they put her in like this long V neck negligee and then you know like they tie her up in the basement like you know Fay Ray King Kong style <laughs> and I was like what I don't understand what's going on here yeah. well, fair, I do like that scene because that's when he has to grow his arm back in the vines and that was kind of kind of cool it's a cool scene it's just more like okay throwbacks to 1954 or whatever well, interestingly apparently on the commentary Wes Craven said he never read a comic book before because the church he grew up in didn't allow them. So he, he deep dived it when he got the film, he deep dived into Swamp Thing Law to make sure yes. he knew the he knew the character. I always found that quite interesting. But I know yeah. this it didn't help his I think he looks he knows what the film is now looking back on. I think he knows what the limitations were. So certain things like transformations are that he's not yes. happy with. Yes. But I don't think he said the work wasn't coming in afterwards. No. And if he what but he had to borrow Five thousand dollars off uh, Sean S. Cunningham. Sean S. Cunningham who created Friday the Thirteenth in order to pay his taxes. Frankly, obviously his career did recover, but I, I don't think it's as bad that it should have almost ended his career. I don't think. Like, I I agree. I, I had a lot of fun watching it. Yeah, it's a schlocky eighties movie. It's actually it's shot very well. I think the performances save it. The if soundtrack I'm being is also incredible. Yeah, because that's uh, what's his name. Oh, it is Harry Manfredini. Who, it's Friday, Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. So anytime I like, anytime I did that, you know, typical person watching a film at home, looked down at my phone for whatever reason, I heard, just heard soundtrack. I thought I was watching Friday the Thirteenth because yeah. it has some similar motifs in it. And I, yeah. So overall, I do think the the film is a very fun package, and if you go into it not taking it seriously, you're gonna have a good time. You will. And sometimes that's really all that matters. Yeah. Because he did well enough to eventually get a sequel, just not. Yes. So it must have done well, but not great. Well, but not great. I, I agree. I And I think, for me, ultimately, if I'm going to go back and rewatch this, it is going to be for the performances and also very sexy, Ray Wise. I'm going back for a very sexy Adrian Barbo. Adrian Barbo. I would also go back for, we for Adrian We will most likely be meeting Ray Wise at the end of the year at a horror convention. I totally forgot about that. I instantly wanted to ask about Jeepers Creepers 2. I know you want to talk to him about uh, Twin Peaks. I want to ask him about Swamp Thing. <laughs> I, I want to ask him, like, do you, like, what was it like the scenes when you were in the costume? You know, it, like I wrote it down actually, but he gives off like Frank Sinatra vibes. Mm. Like Frank Sinatra is not, you know, like conventionally good-looking guy. He was also very early on in his film career. Yes, 
yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because the last film he'd made was like, what, 1969 mm. or something? So there was a big gap, but he'd done a lot of TV. He's on TV, yeah. Just not feature films. But yeah, Ray Wise was great. I just would have liked to have seen more of him. I, I wonder how different the film would have been if it was him in the costume yeah, interacting so- with Barbo because th- there is just too much of a disconnect with Dick Durick. And, so I know they are like- working on like a new Blu-ray release of it. Because uh, I've seen the second one. I've seen this on Blu-ray before and I've seen the second one on Blu-ray. But I think they're working on like a special edition one. And I really hope that at least in special features got some of those scenes. Yeah, restored. I think that could be really cool to see. That would that would be really cool. I mean, I um, I I liked this the movie. I probably would watch it again. I I am curious for another adaptation. To be fair, I uh, I actually really want to watch the sequel. Both this film and the sequel is just upload is just on YouTube. Yeah. So it's it's free to watch. Yeah. With. Obviously, adverts every five minutes. But, yes. you know, if you're not going to have to pay anything for it, you might as well just check you, it out and have a look. You might at as well. One of the weirder moments in this legendary director's yeah. filmography. Yeah, especially, you know, he's very early on in his career. Um, Probably his... thought of taking on a big, well known pro- title like this would do wonders for his career. And obviously, yeah. it didn't. And it wasn't it during the making of this that he had the idea for a Nightmare on Elm Street? He did. So it's special for that reason as well. Because, yeah, this was 82 and Elm Street was not long after. Not long, not long after. It's early 80s, isn't it? Yeah. I can't, I can't quite remember off the top of my head. I, I do love... The bad guys in this are just so 80s <laughs> bad guy. They're yeah. almost like TV villains, but they're so incompetent. They're like Rambo I, wannabes. Yeah, I absolutely, and I absolutely adore that i adore the cheese yeah I, I, that, I think that's exactly what i wanted going into this i knew i wasn't expecting greatness because we've had swamp thing greatness yes and I, yes Derek mears is always very special to me because of friday the 13th yeah. just give us it, the 80s camp you know? yeah and dick had a very wholesome feeling about his performance and i think he will be the main reason i'll watch the sequels because i did like him in the role yeah. And maybe going into it without having that stark contrast with Ray Wise and in a slightly better costume, I've got a feeling the second one's got a chance to be better. I am curious about the sequel because from the thumbnail that I found on it looks YouTube, more of a comedy. it does look more of a comedy. It's Swan Thing, you know, of course, holding on to a beautiful damsel in distress. And she looks like she's laughing. <laughs> she, she looks like she's enjoying that, it. Obviously, it's a TV <laughs> series. I don't know if it's a sequel TV series or a complete reimagining. 72 episodes. So it ran for a couple of years. I think that the character in all has had a very interesting life cycle since Yeah, it's clearly popular. Beginnings. He's yeah. always kind of been around. It, Apparently yeah, it was all at around the same time there was an animated show which got cancelled after like five episodes. Yeah. Why would... What? Obviously, animated shows are a thing for kids. Kids aren't interested in Swamp Thing. <laughs> yeah. It's a very dark story. But yeah, he's a character that's never really gone away, which is which is pretty cool. Yeah. I remember because it was Len Wiseman... And James Wan, I think, who produced the 2019 show. Interesting. And they were devastated when it got cancelled. They said, Look, we got to make a 10-hour Swamp Thing movie, essentially. And they were, they were very thankful that they got to do that. But instead of filming on location, they built massive sets. So it got cancelled after episode one, even though it had great reviews because it was too expensive. It's mad because everyone who talks about the 2019 Swamp Thing talks about how much of a masterpiece it actually was. And, even you know, the filmmakers, critics, everybody. So it's like the expense makes sense. Well, That's there was like hope literally it got the bought, only reason. It got bought by the it CW. Got and he does appear in, you know, I said they did the big Crisis on Infinite Earths where like all everything DC is technically canon. It, it takes a view into lots of different comic book worlds that aren't related. And it does show... Swamp Thing mm. from that series. So there was hope that they were going to revive it, but they didn't for whatever they, they reason. Just did, they just didn't. They yeah. also just wanted to buy it to air it. But it's kind of, he never truly goes away. And based on one of the monsters, I can't remember the name of the monster in Wealth by Night, looks very Swamp Thing. And I think he actually, I think he's called Man Thing. Man Thing. Which actually existed before Swamp Thing. Okay. I think, I might be wrong about that. But I've seen what he can do with a character that looks very similar. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited, but I would rewatch. Thing is, if I saw this on Blu-ray cheap, I would probably just pick it I up. I know you would. Purely I for the special. He would, you know. I would. <laughs> I've came back with some strange Blu-rays. Yeah. Purely for, I want special features. Yeah, that would be fun. And I, I know that there is um, a DVD commentary with Wes Craven. Which is meant to be fun, which is meant to be really good. And I, I think he's pretty, like, no holds barred on it. Like, he's very honest with, you know, like, his his own imperfections as a filmmaker doing, doing the movie and how he'd probably do it different today. And, like, obviously he, he goes into financial troubles because, you know, because of this film. So that would be really interesting to... Yeah, he, he went through, like, a lot of his money quite quickly. 
Just... Yeah. I th- it's also nice to know that um, Adrian Barbeau appearing in the 2019 one, like, she clearly, you know, thought, oh, yeah, why not? Like, I'll do it again. Sure. Yeah. Different well, character. Same, with, same but... with Ray Wise popping up in an episode of the TV show. Yeah. So they must have had, like, nice memories of making the movie. Yeah, they must, yeah, they must have. Which, and that always makes me happy. But uh, I would love to see some footage of Ray Wise in the costumes. Like, maybe, maybe not include them in the movie, but just show the scenes. Yeah. Because I want to see what that would have looked like. Yeah. I mean, seeing them side by side, Dick Doric and Ray Wise, like there is a there is a difference. Like, yeah. Dick Doric is a big guy. He kind of looks like he dwarfs everyone around him. So I, I do understand it. It's just a bit of a shame. Yeah, exactly. Especially when I know I keep talking about the twenty nineteen one. I'm probably just gonna watch a bit of it. The costume, especially, looks so good. I've seen. I remember it. Yeah, yeah. and Derek Mears. Yeah. But like, this was low budget, <clears throat> early eighties. Yeah. comic books, like. It comic is books weren't taken as seriously as they are today. Yeah. And that is a tricky one to do straight away without yeah. good costume budget. But like I said, in the close-ups, I know I'm repeating myself, in the close-ups, I genuinely think it looks really good. Because mm-hmm. he's quite expre- he could express quite a bit through the, yeah. through the makeup. He's a, he's a tragic character. Yeah. Yeah, he absolutely is. Yeah. So, do you have any more notes on this one other than Ray no, Wise in uh, a heart? No, it was just like, it was so much Ray Wise. No, I don't think just so. Put in the comments if you know anyone else who's had a crush on Ray Wise. Ray Wise. But like, I suppose, like, film-wise, you're going to struggle to find anything where he's younger than 35. Like, you'll see him quite young yeah. from 69, but... 35. You have to track down TV if you want to try and find him younger than that. I'll track it down. <laughs> I'll find it. If anyone's going to find Sam it, it's going to be weird, me. Sam weird crushes. Ray Wise is not a weird crush. I stand by that. I think that I've only, my introduction to Ray Wise is only ever been, My introduction to him was in Reaper. If anyone <laughs> remembers that series, it aired on Channel 4, um, like, E4 over here where he plays the devil and he's he's oh, he's, he's it's, wonderful it's he's be. absolutely wonderful and I really liked him in the, but that was where I I think I had actually seen Jeepers Creepers 2 but I didn't realise that was him that so was that was my wise. so my first introduction to him was already like Ray Wise in his yeah I think 50s I think Drew Peaks <laughs> was the first time I'd seen him um, and he did a film called Dead End in like the mid 2000s which I, I don't really... Lynn Shea is in it as well, so it'd be a struggle to get you to watch it. But I don't have a problem with Lynn Shea. I just don't like her in Insidious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I don't think... Uh, do I spoil Insidious right now? Go for it. Look, if, All right, spoilers for Insidious. I know we're doing an Insidious video at some point as well. Yes. If you're going to kill off a character in the first film, don't bring her back in all the subsequent sequels. <laughs> yeah, it kind of lessens the impact, you know? Saw, so, I'm looking at you. <laughs> But We're we... about to have our 10th film with Tobin Bell coming back to play Jigsaw. You clearly didn't want to kill him, so why did you? But I think that was just James Wan and Lee Winnell trying to end the Saw trilogy, actually. It might have been. Like, yeah. please, for the love of God. Please, end it. Yeah. But we stand Ray-wise. Uh, so thanks for something, guys. Yeah, this was an easier, simpler time for comic book movies where we expected, fans expected less. Yes. But we got these weird little cheesy gems that are just silly fun. Yes. Exactly. No toxic fandom for this. No one. toxic fandom for this film because <laughs> this was this was the bar. Yeah. For exactly. Superhero films. Yeah, back that then. is so true. Yeah. Yeah. So especially abstract, like quite obscure characters. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. One, yeah I feel like he's hard to adapt. Yeah. But yeah, uh, thanks for stopping by, guys. We'll see you next week.